Good morning. We're pleased to be here with Dr. David Kang from Korea. Thanks so much for being with us today. Well, thanks for having me. It's a wonderful place here. David, I know you have a really great presentation at this mm. conference about smile and higher order aberrations. Can you give us a brief overview of why higher order aberrations are important and then how they compare between smile and LASIK? I think that is a very valid and important question. Uh, but first off, I would like to establish that when we're talking about laser, corneal laser refractive surgery and talking about aberrations, it's quite important that we're establishing that we're talking about corneal aberrations and not ocular aberrations. We are altering and treating the cornea, so it only makes sense that we're talking about corneal aberrations only. And having said that, and with this in mind, uh, I would like to say that we have a couple of publications on corneal wavefront guided or topo guided surgery with uh, trans epithelial PLK and LASIK, and femtolasic, in which we showed that we could actually reduce preoperative amounts of corneal coma. And the current dogma with SMILE, despite how wonderful it is in its current form, was that we were getting inductions of vertical coma. In fact, if you do a PubMed search with the keywords uh, aberrations and smile, we had 42 peer-reviewed publications. And each one of these 42 publications cite the induction of vertical coma with smile. And I think it's important that we analyze the hows and the whys of this phenomenon, why this is happening. And if we can figure out why, then of course we can figure out the countermeasures for them. Mm -hmm. well, 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 tell us a little bit about vertical coma in the sense of how do patients experience coma and is it visually significant, significant for everyone or just for certain people? I don't think there has been a study done on this, but uh, uh, just talking about vertical coma and not smile at all, talking about vertical coma in general, I think the most dramatic effect of vertical coma that we see in the clinics is patients is from patients with keratoconus. They the the most debilitating uh, visual symptom that they experience is from vertical coma. In fact, the cylinder and the great amounts of astigmatism that we actually refract is from this vertical coma. And so to answer that question, I think it's, it's double vision, it's halos at night, it's, it's glares toward the axis of the magnitude of the coma. So I suppose then there needs to be more study into why specific types of refractive procedures may induce coma more than others. Uh, why do you think that with uh, wavefront or topography guided eczema treatments, we've been able to reduce coma in general? Well, topo-guided or corneal wavefront-guided uh, treatments actually uh, assess and quantify the amounts of coma at whatever location that coma may exist. And with topo-guided, the metric is curvature, and with corneal wavefront-guided, the, the metric is either in microns or diopters or whatever you prefer. Mm -hmm. And the ablation is performed more at that point of location where the coma uh, exceeds uh, the usual amount. So then it may uh, stand to say that uh, as uh, SMILE is, is continued to be looked at over time, there may be uh, modalities in order to assess those types of uh, visual aberrations at the level of the lenticule, and there may be uh, ways to, uh, to sort of address that in the future. Uh, well, we certainly hope so, but uh, even in its current form, remember the SMILE is a using a classical Mundelin's formula, uh, we have uh, found ways to optimize post-op aberrations, uh, including vertical coma, and that was the, the talk that I gave yesterday. So what are the ways that we're now able to try to minimize vertical coma with SMILE? Well, it's not just vertical coma. I mean, uh, why are aberrations important? Uh, in general because they uh, interfere with the quality of vision and vertical coma is one aspect of smile that 
a dogma actually that we could not really figure out how or why that the vertical coma was being induced. But by using and optimizing the level of pulse energy and optimizing the spot separation, in fact, the energy delivery in lenticular creation, the optimizing the optical zone, and having spending a lot of effort into uh, getting better centration, we have shown that vertical coma can be reduced in SMILE. So it sounds as if um, the, the small measures that you mentioned can really add up in terms of trying to reduce our overall aberrations, our higher order aberrations with SMILE. And this has really been, David, a terrific summary for us of why higher order aberrations are important, where they come from, and, and what we can do to try to mitigate them. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks very much.